young youngsters. But I tell you what, they are free for you to have the United States. You know, I appreciate those people who are new who are here. Welcome. Why don't scare you? But welcome to our chapel. And it's good to see young people come to church. Because there's rumors in the country that say young people no longer want to have religion, right, in their life. They're, they're mostly agnostic. They don't want to believe in God. But statistics, of course, statistics, when they when need to actually took, uh, ask those young people, age, I don't know, 21 and under, I call them 21 <laughs> young and they're adults. They want, over 70% wants to know God. Wants to believe in Isn't that amazing? And, I, and, and, there, and how many soldiers do we have in the AIT? I know 305 has so many soldiers, right? About 1,500, 1,600. And 309 has how many soldiers? AIT soldiers? I think we can fill this, this room. In fact, we can probably go to main chapter and fill it twice that many people. I'm not saying, I'm not forcing anyone to come to church with me. I'm not trying to shove a Bible down your throat or trying to lay my hands on you and say, Name of Jesus, come on to evil demon. <laughs> but that's not what I'm trying to do as, as a chaplain. All I'm saying is, you know what? We need a huge revival in this country. You young people are our next generation. This old guy like me, 46 years old, he'll be old. I'll be retiring soon. But you guys are the new generation. We need to keep the light going in this country. It's filled with darkness. Because North Korea and China and even Iran are hungry for God's word. I just read in Open Door USA about a recent persecution of, her name is Fatifa, but she's an Iranian, uh, 19 years old, but she's a, she's a convert to Christian, and, but she was arrested because of her faith. She's, she's currently in jail right now, but you know what? She would not give up her faith in Christ. She's currently being persecuted, physically assaulted, and probably other assaulted as well, if you guys know what I'm talking about. But she would not give up her faith. And they're trying to convert her back to Islam, but she refused to do that. And why am I sharing this script or this these stories? It's not to scare you or not to discourage you, but in fact, it's the opposite. I want to encourage you. We have Bibles that's readily available here in the United States, and you're not going to be persecuted if you have Bible in your pocket. Okay? You're not going to be you're not going to be thrown in jail because of your faith in Christ, because of your belief. Not here in the United States yet. The Bible does talk about, in the last day, there, there will be great persecution throughout the whole world. That if you don't receive the mark of the beast, right, on your forehead or your right arm, you're going to be killed. You can't eat or drink or do any of that stuff if you don't have the mark of the beast. So that day will come in, in, in the last days. But I don't see that right now, not yet, but it's coming. Because, you know, God's word never fails once. And I believe that that day will be coming, that great tribulation that we're all going to experience. So if that day comes, and someone comes into our chapel, and they arrest the chaplain, because, of course, the cross, right, because I'm, I'm a Christian, and they come to you and they say, they will also arrest you, what will you do? You think this is only happens in China and North Korea and Iran and other countries that, that Christianity is forbidden? It can happen in this country as well. So the question is, are you ready? face that test. I can tell you right now, standing right here, I can tell you, at least for me, it's not going to be easy, but I'm going to do it. Because today's scripture passage, as my sister read here, says in Matthew chapter 10, it says here, um, in verse 28, and do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And in verse 32 and 33 says this, Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. When I think about persecutions and your faith is being tested, I think about three friends of Daniel and their names are uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I always get that pronunciation correct, incorrect. How do you say it, sir? Abednego. You got that? Abednego. Abednego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how are everyone? 
it's not Ebed and then I go whatever. I used to say, and then I, I got slapped in the face. It's like, it's not how you pronounce it. But you know what? It's Hebrew. Oh no, it's not Hebrew. It's actually Chaldean. It's Babylonian. And that was the names given to them. But their their uh, Hebrew name was Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Those are the Hebrew names of these three friends. But we're going to focus on just three friends as the Bible talks about. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay? So these are the three names of Daniel friends. And I tell you what, they were tested like no one has ever been tested. They were young, but young as you guys. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe younger, a little younger. Maybe around their late teens. And here they are. Okay, if you guys, I'm just going to kind of give you a brief story about the, the story, okay? The summary of what happened. King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of, ba of Babylon, right? He issued a, a king decree, issued a decree, and, and he built a huge statue of himself made of gold. You know how tall it is? 90 feet tall. I don't use cubits, but 60 cubits and 60 cubits wide. But if you want to convert it to feet, it'll be 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide. Made of solid gold. Can you imagine? Whoever found that, that whoever finds that statue, right? <laughs> Be wealthy, I tell you what. It's like Fort Knox, you know, you can have your own gold right there. But 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide, made of his own image of King Nebuchadnezzar. And whenever music, harp, and lyre is played, they are required to bow down to the statue and worship it. These were young people. And these three, Shadrach, Meshach, and Ebenegal, young Hebrews, were the only ones who would not bow down whenever the song was played, whenever music was played. Did you guys know that? They would not. They refused to bow down. And so there were some of the Chaldeans who complained against the kingdom of Canada and said, these three refused to bow down whenever they played music. But what do you think, King? They're, they're disrespecting you. They're disrespecting the image that's made of you. And you refuse to bow down. And they were actually like governors of the province. You know that? They were high official. When King Nebuchadnezzar heard that, what, what happened? He got really, really upset, didn't he? He said, who are they? Bring them to me now. Bring Shadrach, Misha, and Abednego right now to me. How dare they refuse to bow down? How dare they disrespect me? They're a king. Now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were slaves, right? They were slaves, Hebrew slaves, that were, that were pretty much sold, and they were uh, captive under this king. And they were supposed to serve him. But when, they, when those three refused to bow down, he was really upset. So he said, give me the strongest men and bind them, right? So he had strongest of his men, his soldiers, bind these three friends. And he said, he was so angry, he said, heat up the furnace seven times. Seven times hot than what it already was, right? And he said, throw them in the furnace. But before he did that, he did give them opportunity, right? He never kind of seems like a nice guy. And this is what he said. I read this through Daniel chapter three. The Nebuchadnezzar, verse 13 says, Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying to them, is it true, Shadrach, Misha, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? That if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery, and symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made, good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately in the midst of a burning fire furnace, and who was the God who would deliver you from my hands? Right? Ah, no way. Now let me tell you the names of Shadrach, Mishan, and Ebenobo, what, what it means. So, uh, Shadrach, uh, let me just say, the name is positive derived from Shudur Aku, command of Aku, the moon god. Okay? You know, remember the current is on the moon god? Yeah. So that's what Shadrach means. And Abednego is either slave of the god of Nebu, Nebo or Nabu, okay, that's the Babylonian god. Okay, li listen to these words. Now these names are very important, okay? And finally, um, 
And the slave of God, Nergal, is the name of Abednego. Did you know that? Slave of God, Nergal. So there are two names that are slave of God, other one's moon god, okay? The reason why they purposely gave these names to these Hebrews is because they're trying to convert, right? Change their ideology, their mindset of their god, Yahweh, and they want them to convert to their own god. It's trying to change their culture, their religion, and the way they think, their, their beliefs. And that's what he gave, intention gave these names to these people. But the Hebrew names of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is this. Um, let me, no, I'm sorry, the Hebrew name uh, is, let me, let, me, let me tell you right here, hold on. The Hananiah, Hebrew name, definition of that, uh, interpretation is Yahweh is gracious. In other words, God is gracious. Okay. Mishael is who is like our God. And Azariah is, is, is interpreted as Yahweh has help. Notice God has help. So keep those three things. They're totally opposite from each other, right? First it says this, that Yahweh is gracious, that God is gracious. And then who is like our God. And finally, Azariah means, uh, uh, means what? That God has help. Yahweh has help. So keep those three names in mind as I talk about the story. So what happened? So you have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that were, that were they refused to uh, bow down. And these are the very words of, of these three friends. They said this, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fire furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Those were the very words. God is God. I believe that God will help me, and if not, then you know what? We will not bow down to you. We will not change our faith in God. Think about that. God is gracious. There is no one like our God, right? And God has help. And what happened? As the, as the strong soldiers were taking these, these young men, Shadrach, Misha, and Abednego, to the fire furnace that was heated seven times, as they were going, those, those strong men died. Did you know that? And all those three friends fell in the furnace. And so King Nebuchadnezzar couldn't wait them burn because they refused to obey his order, refused to respect him and bow down to him. King Nebuchadnezzar looked and he saw a fourth man day. He thought, he said, wait a minute, didn't I just throw three people in a fire furnace? How is it that I see another fourth man who is like the son of God? How about God being gracious, right? Talk about there is no God like our God. And God has helped his three friends because of his faith. I'm not saying that happens all the time when, when we're faithful to him and all of a sudden, you know, oh, you can't shoot that bullet and kill me, or you can't get that sword and chop my head off. You, know I'm saying? you guys know about ISIS, right? They're known for the their image is that, right? And what, what do they do with the sword? <coughs> to the Christians who are Christians, they chop the head off. And, I don't know if I encourage you to watch on YouTube, but it might be somewhere out there online where they show these videos, these gruesome videos, because think she doesn't understand what I'm saying now, where they would literally chop off the head. For them, that's cleansing them. That's how they, and you would think, what in the world, in this day and age, who would use sword to chop people's head off, right? You use a bullet, or you use gun, or a grenade, or a bomb, or something. But who would use a sword? The Bible talks about the revelation. I, I, get, I get to speak to that next week, but, but it talks about that. Where these people, those who souls who have been beheaded in the name of Jesus. And when I read the revelation, like, when I was young, I said, who would behead nowadays? We have guns now, right? Who would behead? But the Bible talks about the book of Revelation. It talks about the future. And that day will come when your test, your faith, will be tested. The souls of those who have been beheaded in the name of Jesus. Because of the faith in Jesus. And we have seen that already in this time and age. Like so many Christians have been beheaded because they refused to change 
not be faithful to God whom you cannot see. It starts there. Your faith in God. If you're faithful to God whom you cannot see, I bet you can be faithful to your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, that whom you can see. Think about that. So it starts with your faith in Christ. So remember, God is always grace, gracious, right? He's what? He always helps us in time of need. And there is no one like our Lord Jesus Christ. I call him the first airborne ranger. Some of you guys might have heard of that, right? So what do I mean that he was our firstborn airborne ranger? What did airborne rangers do? They go behind what? Enemy lines. So when God became flesh and came into his world, he went behind enemy lines. And he is our hero, I tell you what, the warriors who are here before God. We are warriors because he's a warrior. He went behind enemy lines and he sacrificed his life free us from being slaves to sin. That is our Lord Jesus Christ. He's not some wimpy guy like Hollywood would like to make him. There's no man here that can endure what he endured on the cross. There's no way. Have you ever got a little splinter in your, in your skin? A little splinter bothers you. You can't barely see it, but it bothers you. Imagine a rugged nail, thick and rusted, not going through here, as most Hollywood say, because it'll rip you, rip apart. It'll just, it'll just come off. We're ready to hear those who study uh, human anatomy, because that way it holds you. Here is very painful, has a lot of nerves, by the way. Imagine the huge nail going through there. And here, and also here, to keep you. I'm not, I'm not trying to give you some gruesome image. I tell you what, Jesus endured something that none of us could endure. And before that, he was flogged, right? Yeah. Have you seen his Roman Roman uh, rip? At the tip, it has what? Razor blade. But the one that hooks. So when it lashes onto you, it, when they pull it, it rips the skin. And this is what Jesus had to undergo. He's no wimpy guy, like some Hollywood love to say. He is a warrior. Here he is, our first airborne ranger who went behind enemy lines and died for us. And that's how he wants us to be. He wants us to be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and not lose our faith in God, right? When time, when time comes, he said, look what I've done. Follow me. You know, you know what leaders I respect? It's officers who just don't say, hey, do this, but they do it themselves, you know what I'm saying? When you can say humility in that. And Jesus showed great humility. God becoming flesh alone says a lot about Jesus, right? He humbled himself to appoint a slave to die for us. Isn't that amazing? He went behind enemy lines. He is no wimpy guy. He is my Lord and Savior. He is my commander in chief. He is my Lord and Savior. He is the God I go to. My God. And there is no one like my God. So I hope this encouraging words this morning will continue to encourage you despite the fact some of the stuff that you may be going through life. I see some Christians who are afraid to pray in public, you know, lunch. You know, for people looking at them, they go, it's not prayer. But wife and I, whenever we go to the we're not, we're not ashamed. I'm not trying to brag here, but why might we always go down? We pray together. I don't care how long we pray. However, how long the Holy Spirit wants me to pray. And I pray. And thank God for the food that God has given me. I don't care if people are watching me. Don't be peer pressure. Don't worry about how people are looking at you. You know, think of you as being the vlogger. You know, everybody's all watching you. So, oh, wow, you know what? Maybe, who knows, that prayer alone could touch people. Because I've seen other people that come to us and say, thank you for the prayer. I saw you. You said you're a Christian. And we start a conversation. You know what I'm saying? Who knows that God is using you at that moment in time to reach out to them? He said, can you pray for me? And they don't know I'm a chaplain. I'm an undercover chaplain, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but they still, God still uses me and my wife to do this work. Who knows God will use you? Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Because God said, if you deny me before men, I will also deny you before my Father who is in heaven. But if you confess me before men, I will also confess you before my Father in heaven. 
think about that. That's a very scary word. Because in Matthew chapter 7, God gives us a warning here. Not everyone who says to be Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. For everyone who does the will of God. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And Jesus will say to them, I never knew. <coughs> Talk about active voice. That's very direct. I never knew you. <laughs> but we know you. It's not whether we know who Jesus is. But the question is, does Jesus know us? He knows us. We're faithless. Brothers and sisters, I encourage you this morning. I hope these words are embedded closely to your heart. And if you have maybe been embarrassed or maybe not have confessed Christ before men, then this is your time to be strong like Shadrach. You shouldn't have been anymore. And always know the three things which I have mentioned. God is always there. He's always with us. He's never forsaken us. It's like God helps Shadrach, Meshach, and Heaven defend him. He always helps us too. And God loves us. God loves us. So Lord, we thank you so much for your word. There's so many Bibles out there, I bet, right now in the United States of America where you are free to have Bibles anywhere and get it for free in the chapel. But it's probably collecting dust as we speak. And maybe there's a lot of Bible apps out there, and technology is great, but when's the last time you opened a Bible app and read the Bible? Lord, examine, help us to examine our hearts. And remind us where we stand in life. Lord, if we have fallen away, Lord, forgive us. Bring us back into the fold, Lord. If we are that lost lamb, Lord, you said if there's 100 sheep and one is lost, you said you will lead the 99 sheep after that one lost sheep. And Lord, there may be that one lost sheep here before you this morning. If it's been a long time we prayed, a long time we read the Bible, the Lord, may this day be a day where it changes our heart. When you change our heart, O oh God, we will make a new. That we will simply follow you and not follow the love of this world. We ask your blessing upon those who are here before you, Lord, and bless this word that they have heard. We ask your blessings in the name of by the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.